everyone. You are now tuned into a Buzzworthy exclusive interview. I am here, your host, Bentu Honeybee, with Malik Moore. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How you doing? My name is Malik Moore. Um, says I'm a native of Philadelphia, 42 years old. Um, been in Philly for 28 years, and it's that's that. <laughs> Back to October 11th, 2010, I was working at Hanuman Hospital, food service, and I did a double. And um, make a long story short, I went home, I think it was like 9.30, 9.40, and um, my, my partner, who was transgender, was, uh, I found her dead in the park, I mean, in the house. October, I'll take you back to October 11th, 2010. I was working at Hanuman Hospital, food service, and I did a double. And um, make a long story short, I went home, I think it was like 9.30, 9.40. And um, my, my partner, who was transgender, was, uh, I found her dead in the park, I mean, in the house. Long story short, uh, I found her body I was blamed for the death. Um, it, uh, I won't say it was a sad story and say it ruined my life, but it, it, it set me back a whole lot. Um, I know how the, the court of public opinion is, and I knew that the first thing when they blamed me for it, and I knew how quick people would believe it, believe it, because I was the spouse. But it forced me to uh, uh, talk about my sexuality on TV. Um, I don't want to actually blame me losing my job, but I actually got fired from my job. Um, it was a, the year anniversary to her death. I was stressing, got into an argument at my job, and he fired me. And I put emphasis on that because my job was my everything. I didn't go out to clubs. Renee, there are a couple of reasons why Malik Moore has decided to speak. He says that in the last two weeks, since he found his longtime girlfriend murdered, his life was turned upside down. He says the story exploded in the media, and now it's time to set the record straight as to what happened that night and the life he shared with his girlfriend. I lost everything. I lost a best friend, a lover. Malik Moore is breaking his silence, talking publicly for the first time about the loss of his girlfriend, Stacey Blonick. I know for sure she loved me, and I know for sure she knew I loved her. Moore found Blonick's body after 9 o'clock on October 11th in an upstairs bedroom in the South Philadelphia home they shared. A pillowcase was around her neck. Police say her killer used it to strangle her. I was hoping that I could shake her and she'll get up. I was hoping that, um, I don't know, when I seen her on the floor, it was like she had a peaceful sleep, but I did see a mark on her head. Their relationship lasted for more than seven years. Stacy was living life as a woman, but 31 years ago was born Michael Lee. Um, in the work field, uh, I was treated different, you know what I mean? I say that is because I went through something where I lost a significant other for seven years, and like my life was being put on trial and 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 ultimately you know to sell newspapers so it's and basically to get, and, and to get ratings i just feel as though that they put my life out they put you on blast it was like kind of like tabloid it was very right. romanticized right. in the public right. media like and, and, and nothing against the philadelphia gay news but it is what it is though they put my whole address and my name in there and only thing good thing about that i was able to get the phone uh uh, uh go to at&t and get her phone cut off without breaking the contract because I showed her there, but they violated my my my, my my privacy, my rights, and all way. You know, I only had to find the body and deal with the death and deal with that I was a suspect at first. Now I got to deal with the aftermath. Now I'm labeled as, you know, quote unquote, this this other person. You understand what I'm saying? Where it was, I was always that person. Just people didn't know my business. Moore says the publicity surrounding Blonick's death pushed him into a spotlight no one could be prepared for. He says Blonick was best known as a support system for others who were gay or transgender, making their transition. And the focus should be on finding her killer. I want to find out who did it. And I want, you know, to get whatever's coming to them. Interrogated me for 18 hours. While I was in a uh, holding cell, uh, the cops was making homophobic jokes 
to each other. How did that make you feel? Uh, it, made, it made me feel terrible because the first thing I the first thing I thought was like, how can I trust people who's making who's making fun of you know homosexuality or transgender people uh, take take the investigation serious? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How um, how do you know they won't be biased? Right. The evidence. Right. Or whatever. Um, exactly. And they were so convinced that I did it that you know I I I. I uh, Cause, Cause, some of the stuff that I even told the cops, and he was like, "Yo, how you know that?" Uh, you know, let, let's be honest. The average criminal is a little more smart than he is. Uh, for what we got, we got forensic files. We got first forty-eight hours. You understand know what I'm saying? So yeah. I watched some shows. It was just certain things that you could go in there and you could just tell. So right. when I first went in, there, I found the body. When I called the cops, I kept telling the cops. I said, "Listen, can you check the phone records?" And he kept saying, "Like, why are you so stuck on that?" I said, because there's nothing, out, no money or nothing is missing, her phone is missing. So he was like, why are you stuck on that? I said, because obviously whoever was there is trying to erase the fact that he was there. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I, I had my niece look on my phone records. She, 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 she copied all the papers, sent them to me, highlighted them, and told me, she said, Uncle Malik, it's a number that you need to concentrate on. And to make a long story short, we did investigate my own little investigation thing. And found out who it was. I went to his job, found out his real name. You uh, found out who married your girlfriend? Yeah. And they, they, let me, let me say this. If you go in the newspaper and you find out around when it was the two-year anniversary of her death, they said they had a suspect. Okay. They had, they was close to a suspect. I called a week and a half ago, the cops didn't even remember me, and he told me they don't have a suspect. So a lot of that might have been just for the media because every time in October it comes up, they ask about an update on the case. But he told me personally on the phone, you know, there's no update. Now, the person who they were concentrating on, his semen is what, it's, it's, it's a little complex, but uh -huh. when, when you don't have a witness and you're just dealing with forensics, you, 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 it's, it's a little more complex. You got a one-shot deal. And I um, when you were with your ex, um, did you ever experience any type of hate? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I, 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 um, no, nah, that ain't gonna happen. I'm, I don't say I'm the toughest dude in the world, but, um, uh, first of all, the experience that, that, that I got from, she's not the first transgender I dealt with. When I first dealt with somebody, they were from Philly. Stacy was originally from D.C., but she moved to Philly. Mm -hmm. But when I first did, I, and people found out, to the, to the, to the straight community, it don't matter if it's transgender, it don't matter if it matter a person doing it, everybody, I don't use the F word, but everybody is this F, you know, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Everybody's putting that one category. Um, I never, yeah, I felt it from the community that I was raised in. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it's, 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 it's a different thing being raised up. And one day you wake up and you say, look, and you tell your mom, I'm gay. Where it's, it's not like I was raised up and everything, and then when I say it, and then my family say, we knew before you. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It's, it was a whole different thing. So it caught people off guard. Well, yeah, because even sitting here with you now, it's like, I'm sure many women hit on you. You know, mm -hmm. you're an attractive man, and you don't necessarily can see. Everyone thinks you can just tell when someone's gay. You know what I mean? And, 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 and see, that's the thing about it is, I try not to pay attention to it. But when I even when I go around family or certain friends, they looking for gay signs. I could tell. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so I, 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 I say that because I could tell they want to see. I think they watching me closely. You understand what I'm saying? Though? Right. And it's like, you ain't got to do that. But that's their perception of it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the same way how it's a stigma on HIV and the way people think. It's, it's, it's just even with homosexuality, we're dealing with transgender. You'd be surprised. Like I told you last, it was the last week or day, uh, week before last, I came in. It was a two-day seminar where they trained the people on how to be... Oh well, I met your friend, um, transgender friendly. Yes. And I thought sure. that I thought that was that was important because certain agencies don't know how to deal with transgender. Not even just certain agencies. Like I was telling you, when I was um, in high school and I was first introduced to the gay community because I was, I had a bunch of gay friends, um, I would like see transgender individuals and I would literally just stare or and like I remember being cursed out at least once or twice by transgender individuals and I, I didn't know how to respond, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to say, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to train to train not only agencies but like have workshops for 
everyday people because we're living in a very diverse world. Yourself as a homosexual or heterosexual. I, I, I now, now that's 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 where I have an issue. Okay. I, I, I consider myself as a homosexual. Okay. Dealing with a transgender, that's not always a good thing. I, I say that, and it might it might sound a little tricky, okay. but you know, to us it might it might sound, well, but to them, if they deal with somebody who says he's homosexual. It takes away from them being this woman that they want. Oh, cause in their mind, like, okay, so they don't want to be attracted to somebody who's who's who who who, who, who identifies as gay. They want to try to somebody who's being get uh, straight. To me, they to want me, to me, to me, I have issues with that. But that's a whole other story. Cause to me, that's a dude in denial. Okay, I yeah. Never, that's, uh -huh. that's what turns them on. That's what turns them on. They stuck. Some people's attracted to an illusion. You know what I'm saying? No, but me. But you in know, your relationship with, with, with your ex. She identif she understood that you identified yourself as a homosexual and she was okay with that. Or was it to like a to a, to a to a certain extent. It was it was actually because we um we just had time together. So so a after a while we learned stuff about each other and we just started dealing with each other and, and accepted certain things. Mm -hmm. Like 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 even now, I just told a friend of mine, she's been going for you have some transgender people who, um, and there's another word that I just said, gender variant. Okay. Gender variant is, I don't get it wrong, I just found out. They don't get the surgery where it might be a, fem it'll be a female, but give the appearance where they dress like a, you know, it's a gender, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's not an actual transsexual. But transsexual I, means that they cut off no, the member? So. No, well, well, they, uh, no, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, oh wow, I'm giving a, a pre-op. A pre-op. A pre-operation. Okay. And then you have the post-op. So it's uh, like the full, like, I'm living as a woman. Right. But a lot of them never go that far. They'll, they'll, they'll get the hormones mm -hmm. and they'll, uh, you know, get the, uh, the breasts, but they never go that far. Why do you think? And the, uh, and the other reason they 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 like using they Good like. Remember. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's yeah. having your cake and eating it too. Right. <laughs> it's, it, I mean it's 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 the truth, and there's a there's a. Uh, I'm really talking a lot now, but, it's good. but there's a there's a saying out there they call them tranny chasers. Okay. A tranny chaser, somebody jumps from any tranny go to the next one. And, I try to separate myself from them. So they're like addicted to just the idea of having one. It's a fantasy. It's you know? a fantasy. And and, and they might just and act and like they have sexual. I said something. I said something on my status the other day, Facebook. I said if you're attracted to someone who's afraid to be seen with you, you don't have nothing special. You're a secret. You're a secret. And a lot of them are attracted to that. This guy who has the baby mother who gives this rah 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 because mm -hmm. it makes them feel more real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But deep down inside. He's a secret. He's sneaking to go see them, and and when I say that, I try to differentiate myself and separate myself from them, and not to toot my own horn. I've been on the front line with the trans march. Training chasers don't do that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. No. What's the trans march? Uh, it's it's something that happens every October where they march for uh, trans transgender rights, uh, and they do a candlelight visual for the members that we uh, transgender you know, brothers and sisters that we lost. And every November, it's the National International Day of Remembrance for Transgender. How know. difficult is it to really form relationships, though? Well, <laughs> I may get in trouble saying this, and I know some people get upset with this, but the truth is the truth. A lot of them, uh, and I don't judge on that. I used to have a big problem with that. I still do. But um, a lot of them, because of work and because they can't find work, turn to prostitution. And, right. Um, me saying that is, I think any man, you know, will have a problem with somebody they deal with, and, and that's what they do or done that. And, and you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you have, you, you you have some that um, they do what they got to do and get certain jobs, but then you have um, uh, it's been a challenge. I'm not gonna lie. It's so it's uh, is it? It's been a challenge because of, because. Uh, you, would you not date just a regular like me, or is it really all your interest transgender? Well, well, well. To be honest with you, I'm attracted to women, okay. and and I, I, I like trans <coughs> women. However, I'm gonna be honest with you, is I never, 
I was talking to a girl in Philly one time, and uh, she was a sweetheart. She was she was the sweetest person I ever met. But Philly's so small, and I just didn't want to hold a secret. You know what I mean? So I just I always disappeared, showed up, disappeared. You know what I mean? I got incarcerated, she'd write me letters, and then she would say, you keep on popping up in my life, this and that, and I just knew sooner or later she'd find out, you know that what I mean? That you had this alternative life. Right, you know what I mean? And I remember when she first met me, I was dressed nice, and she just came out of nowhere, and she said, so you're not gay, is you? So the first thing, so I, was, so, so yeah. the first thing I was sitting there saying was like, damn, somebody told them my business, but it wasn't yeah. that. She it was just something saying, I gotta ask, you know what I mean? So I never said yes or no, I was like, damn, but, you know, I always left that open, but... I, I think about her a lot, but I, I used to remember some of the things she used to say about homosexuals. I remember Al B. Shaw came on TV and something she said, not saying he's a homosexual, but what they had to say about him. So, you know, it, it, it was, and so I knew it wasn't going to really last. I knew sooner or later. So I knew. So just because you have this taste for something else, another flavor, it makes it difficult to even embrace that other side and say, okay, if you did want to date a female... But there's, 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 you'll be shocked. There's, down here on 13th Street, there's females that I met right there on 13th Street. But say they already down there and they already know. You know what I'm saying? Where is... So... I, I'm, I'm, I'm in New York now. I can meet a girl any day, every day. But the point is, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I just, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'm about being honest and being straight up about anything now. And for me to even do that, I'll be playing. You know what I mean? I come say I'll be playing. For me to even ask somebody to deal with that, that'll be that's a lot. A lot to deal with. You but know they have a term for women who don't mind dating men who. Yeah, but 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 I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. Um, no. Yeah. I wouldn't. Um, I I the same way we say we're attracted to the illusion this and that. I love, I love, a, I love everything about a woman. But um, that's what attracted me to transgender. Now, when I first came out. The hardest thing in the world, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't what people. A lot of people think it was. It wasn't even to tell my mother I was gay. It was for me to admit to myself that I was gay. Hardest thing in my life, ever to do. It was sure. because I was fighting this out. And then when I when I I don't I don't uh, you know once I told my mom I told other people you know what I mean it was it was a uh, made it. A little easier, but I was very overwhelmed. Did you have the support of other people who were going through it? Well, no, no, I, no, not at all. No. I, 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 I went through. I'm not. If, if we did this interview a year ago, I'd have been the most bitter person you ever met. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you. But I'm in a better place now, and I'm good. I, 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 I'm, I don't even want to. I'm not even playing. But everybody left me for dead. They did. I, I, I stayed on. I stayed on the crime scene, lived there for three months, in the room where she died. I had nowhere to go. I went back to work 18, 18 days after that. Like, who? Like, like, I found her body. I touched it. I screamed. And people would call me and say, are you all right? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm all right. But deep down, you should know I'm not all right. I, I, I won't be all right for a while, if I might ever be all right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there were certain people that would call and ask me, but I needed people to come over and just sit there with me. Nobody did that. And just not say anything. Maybe just hold your hand. Right. And, I, and, 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 and the city just, when I sit there and say the city just lets you go, they don't care if you get therapy, they don't care if you get anything. You understand what I'm saying? So, so what would you suggest for anyone who else who may be going through this right now? Like, what kind of help did you, did well, you well, get? Well, 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 I, I, this song, there's a transgender that got killed a couple of months ago, Tara, uh, in Northeast. Mm -hmm. And I've been in contact with her mother and I've been giving her advice. Okay. She's a sweet lady. And um, I just told her what to expect. And, 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 and I hate to say it though, but everything, everything I told her was gonna happen, happened. Like I told her after the funeral is when everybody gonna stop showing up, they're going to stop calling. You understand what I'm saying, though? I went through a period where I felt like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound, because I'll never be that weak again, but I questioned, like, I, I, I don't to say entertain the thought of suicide, but it was a thought. Uh, you know what I mean? It, it really was, I was like, yo, can, I can't handle this. But what really got me through it was like, yo, I came too far, I went through, I've been through hell all my life, and I refused to, I used to sit there and ask why me, why me, and I'm not the most spiritual person in the world, but 
now I look at it and say, like, why not me? I feel as though God chose me because I'm strong enough to handle it. That's the only way I know how to do it. If not, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be a messed up person, really. You know what I mean? So, what, what? I'm, 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 I'm in a different place right now in my life. So a couple of years ago, I was, I was still feeling well. I had to prove this and prove that to certain people. Where they said, nah, I'm cool with it. You accept it, you accept it, you don't, you don't. You ain't gotta be my friend. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm good with it. You know what I mean? So. Any last words for anyone, all the viewers out here watching this incredible story? And I just love the fact that all this time the phone didn't even make a sound. <laughs> But I just love the fact that you were able to come out here and keep it so real and, you know, be so cool about your experience because, you know, you definitely came from a rough place and to see you now sitting here, it just inspires so many people out there to just be themselves and to, you know, just be open with their life. Only thing um, is, I, regardless of what my issues was with the police or whatever about how they handled the case, it's, uh, first of all, about transgender people, they exist more than you think they do. Um, a lot of times we sit there and we be like, I know one or two people, believe me, you know way more people that's transgender than you know this transgender exists. And it's something that that that's is gonna be here. It's not something that's just a phase. Um, if you look on YouTube, there's some people and they starting they trans they starting they transition at the age of six. So it exists, it happens. Um, with me what I'm saying is, you know, you live and you learn. I'm um, I'm starting a new life, getting my life back together. I'm 42 now. I spent two thirds of my life in Philly, and I went back to New York, try to just put the pieces back together. You know what I mean? I I I'm no longer bitter towards Philly. I I became who I am in Philly, but Philly 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 Philly. It was at one time my 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 spirit was damaged. And so I just had to go. But, you know, I always had a love for Philly. And, um, you know, I try to honor her as much as I can every day. What's up, Buzz Club? We are back. I am here with your Royal Highness herself, Jerusalem's soul princess. Her name is Hadar Binyamin, and if you don't know about her, you will. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.